like scratching your head. Well, that's easy peasy. It's not a rocket science. Oops, it is a rocket science. So, here it goes. When a satellite is placed in an orbit around the Earth, it keeps moving on its own without needing any fuel and would keep doing so for almost forever. But then, how would you reach a far away star or a planet if you kept moving round and round and round inside your own orbit? Oh, simple. Just increase the size of your orbit Fire the engine when it's close to Earth. Switch it off once the speed is gained. Put the action on the loop and travel far, far away. Wondering how an eight-year-old learned this? Well, by seeing a simple process of frying bodies in hot oil, by only switching on the gas stove for a short interval. Thanks to the movie Mission Mongol. Okay, so was that heavy? Let me make it simple. So I'm sure all of you know how long does the earth take to revolve around the sun? Hmm, I heard 365 days, full marks. But what about the moon then? Any guesses? No. This secret was revealed to me by my nanny's bedtime story. Once upon a time, there was a king called Daksh. He had 27 beautiful daughters by the name Ashwini, Bharini, Kritika, Rohini, and on and on and on. He married all of his daughters to the moon and took a promise that moon would stay an equal amount of time with each of his daughters. And the moon stays an equal amount of time with each of his wives before he returns back to the one he began with. A full circle. Hence, 27 days to go around the earth. Wasn't that easy peasy lemon squeezy? Learning with once upon a time with stories and poems that rhyme. Why struggle to memorize when stories can make you really wise? And quote by an aspiring doctor and author, Shriya Mishra, my elder sister. So now do you see what gave me my idea to innovate? It is Learning with once upon a time. We all love stories, young or old. They simply capture our attention. Since my play school, I have noticed one thing. My teacher kept shouting, quiet, calm down, behave. For words only to fall on deaf ears of we naughty kids. And her and her lungs would get tired after shouting. There was a mantra. She would hiss only once. And miraculously, there was a pin drop science in the class. All the ducks falling in line. Do you know what was the mantra? Again, no points for guessing. It was story time, kids. I need not tell you how stories transport kids into wonderland, how they have inspired generation, taught us about the good and bad, 
taught us how to sigh with courage in the time of despair. People generally agree that subjects like literature and art can be so well taught through stories. But beyond this, what I want to shine light on today's fact is that storytelling should educate us in the field of science and mathematics as well. From some of our favorites, like the hungry caterpillar, which teaches us the concept of the days of the week and how a small cocoon turns into a beautiful butterfly. To some of your favorites, like the movie Interstellar, that teaches you the thing like the fourth dimension. So, my point is, that stories are assumed to be entertaining, inspiring, or the max, curiosity generators. But what I am highlighting is that stories should become the front and the center of the education. It's time that the textbook take the back seat. I do not like that heavy school bag on my shoulders. Stories make information more memorable. It sticks to you. Stories give you much higher recall and retention than any other method. Through animation, through movies, through storytelling, dry and heavy, Topics of science, math, and technology can be made more interesting and easy to recall and retain. Why don't we have our favorite cartoon characters teach us the dry and heavy subjects like history and geography? Cartoons like my favorite, Barbie, and Mr. Bean, traveling to different countries and cities and telling us the history and geography of those places. Would that not be fun? I hope now you agree with me that there's lots of power in the line once upon a time. And before I say you thank you, let me leave you with a bit of trivia. Are you ready? The Earth takes 365 days. The Moon takes 27 days. The smallest planet, Mercury, takes 88 days. So how long does the biggest planet, Jupiter, take to go around? And Nani has told me a story about this as well. Hmm, need some clue. Okay, your clue is that pot full of nectar that dripped on earth. So go back, find your answers with a yet another once upon a time. <laughs>